Welcome back, everyone, to another episode. Today, we are speaking with Eddie Turner. Eddie is an executive coach, a top 10 motivational speaker, a preeminent authority on emerging leaders, and that's why we have him today, a top global mentor and thought leader, an international best-selling author, and just listed as one of the top 200 biggest voices in leadership. Eddie, welcome to the show. Enrique, thank you for having me here on the Developing the Leader Within podcast. Really excited to be here with you and your audience. Outstanding. And we're looking forward to hearing from you folks. We will be speaking about the forging of a leader. And I couldn't have thought of anyone better to get us down this road in this conversation. But Eddie, before we get into that, tell us a little bit about you. I'm just a kid from the Midwest. I'm from Northwest Indiana, Chicago area, and I spent my first career in information technology, transitioned over to leadership and development, was passionate about IT, I'm passionate about leadership development. Uh, Both are two careers that I've always said were not jobs. Both were pursuits items that I would do because I just love the game, as they say about basketball, the love of the game. And uh, the fact that it's a way to earn a living is is a nice cherry on top for sure. But in, in both sides of, 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 the, of the aisle, I, w- I was able to spend my career doing something where I'm able to help people maximize how effective they are at, at their workplace. And that is wonderful to hear that you were able to take two a passions of yours and make it not be a job. You know, I spent 26 years in the Navy and I'll tell you, I enjoyed every bit of it. That was not a job. I truly enjoyed everything they gave me. And then now in the leadership development, uh, like you, I am enjoying both those pursuits. Uh, and thank you for sharing that. Now, Eddie, as we get through this episode, this is where we highlight how a leader can be forged, how you can actually establish a leader. But before we get into that, what is your definition of leadership? My definition of leadership has evolved over the years. Uh, at at, At the fundamental level, leadership is when you have someone else following you. Uh, There's the leadership frameworks that I learned during my time studying at Northwestern University. And I was exposed to some of the greatest leadership thinkers Uh, Both, I'd say, in the classroom in terms of the leaders I was learning from, but then also the leaders I was being exposed to in terms of theory. Uh, My career at GE, where I saw the best lead the best, GE was renowned for uh, the leaders it produced. They were the envy of industry. And so uh, very grateful for the time I had with that. Later on, I went to Harvard and had a chance to complete my executive education certificate. And and it's in public leadership. Here again, exposure to the most brilliant minds of leadership in the classroom. In fact, I'd say perhaps one of the preeminent authorities on leadership, Dr. Ronald Heifetz. And so learning from Dr. Heifetz, Dr. Livingston, and so many other of the professors there at the Harvard Kennedy School in that program, again, caused me to have a different definition for leadership and also a different way of leading. And then where I am today, I'm doing some of the best work of my career at at Linkage, uh, Linkage Incorporated, so LinkageInc.com, but Linkage was just purchased by SHRM, so the Society for Human Resource Management. Well, here we have our own framework for leadership. And the purposeful leadership framework is the one that I'm operating under today when I'm interfacing with clients. But it's really an amalgam of all of the the exposure I've had that I bring to clients. But right now, I focus probably more on that one than any of the others. Outstanding. Now, you've written a book on emerging leaders. Uh, That's why I chose you to speak about this as we're forging leaders from the ground up. There are some out there that are wondering, you know, how can I identify that I may be a good candidate to become a leader? 
Well, when you talk about, when you told me you, you were going to call this forge, the forging of a leader, I thought that was an interesting word choice because immediately when I read forge, I, I, I think about metal, uh, metallurgy as a profession. And so I grew up in a family that spent their years in, in the steel mills of Northwest Indiana. And when you're making steel or any other metal, you, you, you're going through a, a process where you're heating up raw materials to a boiling point. And then when that forging process is this impact you're making with a hammer, a wedge, some item to bend it into what you want it to become, to make it. And that's what it is when it comes to the forging or developing of a leader. You must go through the heat, as it were. And the heat causes the dross to fall away. It causes the impurities to be extracted. And then what you're left with is a refinement of a precious metal. And you must take some hits. There's some impact that's going to happen to you as a leader. Everybody's not going to like you. You're going to be challenged. But in the end, you're all the better. And the beautiful part is it's a stronger peace in the end. It's an enduring peace in the end. And so these qualities that we make about a leader uh, is very much uh, akin to, to that uh, for which you named this episode. Because of that, sometimes people say, well, you must be this type of a pedigree or come from this type of a background if you're going to be a leader. And to that, I strongly disagree. You know, one of the premises I've always held, but I didn't have a language for it until I went to the institutions I cited earlier, was that anybody could be a leader. Yes, there are some people that are naturally born with certain qualities, but leadership is within the auspices of anyone. Anyone can lead because it simply is, can people see you as someone they would follow? Will people follow you? And Later on, I started to learn the difference between influence, the difference between a formal leadership role and informal leadership. And so leadership takes on different aspects um, and that anyone can lead at any capacity at any time. I love that. You know, you put the framework as, as a, you're describing the steel being heated and to a point where you can mallet this thing with a hammer and, and make it look what you want it to be in terms of a reproduction of leadership. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that are ready for that, but some that are not. What are some things that I can start doing as a person, maybe thinking about leadership that today will prepare me for that journey of leadership for that forging, heating, and all those things that come with preparing you to become a leader? It starts with the very question you asked me earlier, what's your definition of leadership? Because once I define what leadership is, then I know what I'm going to pursue and how I can prepare myself. So if I think it is only about a person that has a title, boss, manager, you know, CEO, then I think that I can't be a leader until I've attained that. But if I understand that leadership starts with influence at any level, that means I could be the person that doesn't have a title and still lead. We've seen that people in society, we look at a, a Rosa Parks, or we look at anybody that didn't have a formal authority, but changed history, right? So leadership, understanding what it is, is the first step. How do, will you define it as an individual? I'd say a, st a second step, which usually comes much later for people, is what Dr. Ron Heifetz taught us at the Harvard Kennedy School. He said that as a leader, you lead without a framework at your own peril, because otherwise you're just shooting from the hip. And he understood that because he was a surgeon before he became a leadership expert. And so surgeons, our doctors, wherever we go to see them, they don't take any steps without walking through a prescribed set of questions first. Because to do so otherwise will be malpractice. And so we must have a framework that we're going to operate from as a leader. 
And that's why I mentioned earlier, for example, that I use the purposeful leadership framework. When I'm working with leaders and I'm marching through this set of very intentional uh, instructions, it makes it easy for a leader to be able to have a point of reference. And, and I'll briefly share this with you uh, that you can be able to uh, see for your, your audience here. This is what the purposeful leadership model looks like. It starts with at linkageink.com, who am I becoming in, on the inside? Then we get into my ability to inspire, my ability to engage. And the one that's harder to read is innovate in yellow. And finally, my ability to achieve. But going around all of that is the most effective leaders who are purposeful are also inclusive. We don't exclude anybody. And so Mark Hannum is the chief research officer emeritus who uh, really took me under his wing and helped me to understand this model uh, when I joined Linkage. And this is what I use. So defining leadership for yourself and then moving to the point that you have a framework that you're going to use is what will help a person get ready for leadership. I totally agree with that. And uh, you mentioned the great doctor, which I happen to have a course with as well at Harvard. Um, I learned so much with that man, and I know you did as well. Now, there are habits that will undoubtedly prepare you for being a good leader, but there are some habits that can keep you from being a good leader. So what sort of habits should I establish today that will help me grow as a leader? There are many habits we can form. Uh, number one, have some habits, right? So we either have habits intentionally or we have them unintentionally. So we should take control as much as we can over how we will uh, conduct ourselves because uh, we, we, we end up on autopilot once we've learned a new skill be it driving or anything, we're no longer uh, paying conscious attention to everything we do behind the wheel, for example, uh, once we've got a certain level of competency. So establishing habits. Um, and, and part of that is, I would say, fundamental. Uh, the Harvard Business Review says leaders are readers. So reading is fundamental to anyone who's going to be a leader. You must constantly be putting in new learning into yourself. Uh, far too often as an executive coach, when I'm working with leaders, I find people still trying to live off what they learned 20 years ago at, in high school or at college. Uh, some folks haven't picked up a new book since their last textbook, which they were required to pick up. So that is what I say is fundamental. And I believe it starts in, 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 in the womb. Uh, I'm a new parent. I'm an old parent, but <laughs> I'm new. And so I've applied, I didn't know I was going to be a parent, but I've got a chance to apply that firsthand. You know, so I would read to our, our daughter in my wife's stomach. And then we continue that after birth and even right now. Um, and one of the cutest things that she'll say is she'll come up with, with a book and say, Daddy, read book, read book, Mommy, right? I love it when she says that. And so building that as a habit early, the love of books, the love of learning, I just believe it's fundamental to everything because reading leads to comprehension, comprehension and speech patterns, language patterns. And then everything that a leader must access, we can sit and have it given to us through television or audio media, but there's something very powerful that happens when we process it intellectually ourselves, when we can sort through the noise. And so I, I would say out of all of the habits we can form, reading would be one. And that's powerful. It's been said, what got you here won't get you there. Right. And so you cannot rest on your laurels of the things that you may have attained throughout the years. Yes, they are important, but it cannot be your fuel forever. Right. So you have to, uh, and I love that suggestion in reading and exploring your own mind and how you digest that to be able to apply it further. Now, talking about the mind, what mindset must I be in to establish a life of impact on the people I get to lead? To 
establish a, an impact on the people you get to lead, you have to understand what they need. And then I also would say that you have to, uh, I believe it was Eleanor Roosevelt who said, people want to know how much you care before they know how much you know, care about how much you know. So we, we, we must care about people. Do I genuinely care about other people, my fellow human beings? Um, and so I believe that the most effective leaders are those that truly care from their heart and that they are able to emote it in such a way that others feel it. And when you care, then you're going to listen to people. And when you listen to people, you'll find out what they need. You'll find out what their desires are, what their goals are. And then you're in a position to meet them as a, as a leader. And I believe that one of the greatest injustices that can occur for a leader is just to march into a new environment with their own agenda and just push it down. Sure, people want you to lead and want you to establish an agenda, set the pace, but they want to know how they can be a part of that. And so I... Uh, it really is incumbent upon leaders to care, show they care, and then set the tone that includes everyone so that you can really have full engagement and achieve. Well, that will definitely get you in the graces of people that you're leading. You know, the spray and pray does not work with people. <laughs> you know, you, you could probably use that in a tactical sense in the field of military application, but it's still a, a, a thing that happens, but it, it's not effective. And the best thing you could do is get to the hearts and minds of your people and see how you can impact them that way, because it's truly what they desire. Now, mm -hmm. talking about impact people and seeing that because leaders need to verify that their leadership is being effective. So what is the proof uh, I need to look out for uh, that will tell me I'm being effective as a leader? You know, when you ask that question, I, I think of one of the very first leadership books I ever read, which was Leadership and Self-Deception. And so I have always tried to avoid self-deception on my own. And then I try to help other leaders avoid self-deception. So the very fact that a leader has hired me or my organization is an indicator that they want that independent, third-party, neutral observation to tell them the truth. Now, sometimes it happens because they've hired an executive coach like myself, or they have uh, received feedback from other people, be it their yearly review or just that feedback that the manager has passed on or that their employees pass on. And then other times it's when an executive coach goes in and uh, issues a, a 360 assessment of some sort. And so they take that 360, that full view of the person's relationships with their direct reports, their peers, their superiors, their customers, and in some cases, even their family. And now this independent data comes together and paints a picture of who the person really is versus who they think they are. And that is a powerful tool. You know, you talk about self deception and it happens so easily, right? It's part of those habits that you form uh, to think that, Hey, you have it all in the bag and mm -hmm. nothing is wrong. And you just let people go on and, and so forth. But, you, you put, you make some great points there. Don't be so blinded to your leadership that you think you're the greatest. Look out for those indicators, especially among the people that you're leading, uh, that will tell you exactly where you are. Uh, Eddie, it's, it's been great to, to share this time and all this information. And I hope the listeners have started to look at areas where maybe they can hone in and and start shaping themselves to be a better leader but if someone wanted to get a hold of you your services your books and things like that how can they reach you well i'm eddie turner and if people are listening to this and not looking at it on the screen i spell eddie e-d-d-i-e -E. so eddie turner and you punch that into any of the social media channels that you use i'm there and i welcome you to connect with me on linkedin facebook twitter instagram 
I also uh, can be found at Linkage Inc. So linkageinc.com or sherm, hrm.org. Uh, there's a speakers bureau there to book me for uh, your a keynote for your organization, uh, to come into your organization for uh, to facilitate a, a leadership retreat, uh, a leadership workshop, or executive coaching. That's where you can find uh, access to me or any of my team members that work with me to assist you and your pursuit of forging a leader. Outstanding. Well, folks, we're going to have that as part of the show notes and the video so you can get a hold of Eddie, his services, and all he does. It's been a pleasure, brother, to see you, to talk to you, to be able to share this time with our listeners. Folks, today's episode is sponsored by Triad Leadership Solutions and Superpass which are powering our website and app, Southern Sweet and Sassy Coffee, one of my best drinks, and Hodchester, London. If you've enjoyed this episode and learned something interesting about the topic covered today, make sure to subscribe and let us know by leaving a comment right now. And we're always looking for new ideas and guests that can add to our show. So if you know someone or have a topic that you would like featured on the podcast or want to sponsor our show, We'd love to hear about it by sending us an email at triadleadershipsolutions at gmail.com. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode where we dissect leadership from another angle. And as we like to end the show, success to you.